Oceans is the latest game from North Star Games in which players play and evolve species into a marine environment and seek to earn the most points by controlling species and gaining their populations at the right time. Players who are familiar with the Evolution franchise will find a lot familiar here, but no prior experience with the franchise is necessary. In the game, you play cards from your hand to form new species. Each species has a number of traits, such as Apex Predator or Filter Feeder, that affects how and where it can feed. Careful management of your traits and the total number of species that you have out is integral for being able to age and gain as many points as possible. We recently received our Kickstarter copies of the game, and we've had plenty of chances to get it to table. So, without further ado, let's dive into five things we liked, and one that we didn't, about oceans. First thing that we like about oceans is that the reef and the ocean zones are a very interesting way to manage the food aspect of the fish in the game. So players can play cards to migrate fish from zone to zone in order to trigger different kind of effects. So when zones empty, things like the Cambrian explosion and the other events trigger. Plus by default, species can only forage in the reef. So managing this whole aspect is extremely interesting and really does give you a lot of different options. The ocean is a dangerous place, and predators lurk behind every coral reef. You never know when a carnivore is going to swim around the corner and eat the last population from one of your species. Thankfully, it doesn't go extinct immediately. Instead, there's a mechanic called aging, which is how you move population from your species boards into your scoring area. If a species can't age the required amount, then and only then does it go extinct. This is a great mechanic because it allows the game to avoid some of the gotcha systems that we've talked about not liking in the past. The Cambrian Explosion also denotes a big turning point in the game. It's when the game accelerates and really lets you get in the meat of the game. You set your foundation at the beginning of the game, and at this point it's a little bit more forgiving. You only age one population per turn, so you have a little bit more room to experiment and create your groundwork. Then the Cambrian Explosion happens, and at this point a few things change. First, you age two instead of one per species per turn. Next, you also get to play two cards per turn instead of one, which is what you were able to play before. And third, and most interestingly, is that you can now use the deep cards and actually play them on your species because the ocean is now open to you. These changes all really accelerate the gameplay and help you kick into high gear, making the game really interesting and very dynamic. While the Shallows traits are well balanced and form the core of most of your species, the Deep is where the game really shines. This deck of almost a hundred completely unique cards can only be played into your species after the Cambrian Explosion, but man do they have an impact. Some of the Deep cards are just bigger versions of the regular Shallows cards, but others are completely unique effects that have never been seen before in the game, like the Kraken that allows your species to attack three times per turn and rules the ocean with an iron tentacle. Deep's cards are so powerful, but they do come with a cost. You have to put population from your score area back into the play area in order to play those traits out, but once you do, they're powerful enough that they can form the cornerstone or really kick your engine into overdrive. So the last thing that we want to mention is well, something that you've been seeing throughout this entire video, and that is the artwork and the production value of this game. The artwork in particular done by Catherine Hamilton, at least for the Shallows cards and the cover, that is on par with some of the most beautiful artwork in games that I've ever seen. She's the same artist who did a lot of work for the original Evolution series, and it really, really works here. The cool part about Oceans is that that's not the only artwork too. 
they had a group of another dozen or so artists who did all the unique deep cards because they are all unique and the artwork is really cool on them too. Really this game just shines from the cardboard fish which each have some different designs to the cards, the cover, everything, the reef. It is all really, really just gorgeous. For all its positives, we do have one gripe with Oceans, and that is that engines, you know, series of traits that people can play onto their species that form a cohesive grouping and work together, can be very, very hard to disrupt. It's very easy to become population stable with maybe one or two traits on each of a handful of flanking species, and then the rest of your traits can just be taken up with things that prevent them from being attacked, things that make it really hard to attack them. It's a very safe game that way, if you can get your engine online. The Deeps cards do a good job of shaking this up with the ability to ignore certain defensive traits when they come online, but overall it can be very very frustrating when someone else just gets their engine online and makes it impregnable before you have a chance to do anything about it. Thank you all for joining us as we delve the depths of the ocean in order to find all the things that we liked about this game and some of the things that we didn't. We hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe for more of these kinds of videos because we've got a lot planned in the near future. If you want to hear more of us chatting, we've also got a podcast. You can find that, well, wherever you listen to podcasts. And now I'd like to just give a special shout out to our Greater Worm patrons who really help keep us going. We really appreciate all your support. So thank you so much to Hunter, Casey, Carissa, and Sam. You're all rock stars. Thank you. And finally, don't forget, board games are part of a balanced diet.